Hi, welcome to Left Foot Media. My name is Brendan Malone. Well, today I had to travel for work, and so before I left, I thought I would download a brand new movie that has hit Netflix in the last week, and then I could watch it on my iPad on the plane trip there and the plane trip back, and then I could let you know uh, via another one of these quick and dirty webcam reviews what I thought about the film. The movie was the outside of the brand new Martin Zanvliet film, uh, starring uh, Jared Leto in the main role. Effectively, I would sum up this movie by saying this is a film that answers the question, what if Martin Scorsese was to make a mediocre mafia film that was set in Japan? Because really, that's what this is. It is a classic example of what I think is style over substance. There's certainly things that are stylish and visually admirable about this movie, However, there is a lack of substance to go along with it, and it just feels incomplete as a result as a film. The main character, played by Jared Leto, uh, it's not one of his greatest acting performances, but it is pretty serviceable. The real problem, I think, with this character is that it's underwritten. Again, this is this whole lack of substance issue. The, the character just feels like there are things that should be present that are not there, um, there is uh, a, a, perhaps a bit more of his backstory that needed to be fleshed out. It's just underwritten. One of the aspects of this character that's obviously quite important is the fact that he is a, a veteran uh, of sorts. Uh, he is a soldier who has ended up in a Japanese prison. However, the soldiering aspect of his character, which is actually quite important, is just, it's really not present. I mean, you're told about it, but it should be, uh, it, it's underwritten. There should be more of that aspect of his character to help us make sense of who he is and perhaps some of his subsequent actions. And it's just, it's just missing. What's interesting is apparently Tom Hardy was originally cast to play this lead role, but unfortunately other commitments prevented him from being part of this film. And then Jeremy Renner was uh, on the table at one point to play this role. I think Tom Hardy would have been the best of all three options. Uh, Tom Hardy, I think, brings a bit more of an acting gravitas to these kind of roles. And he also brings a much bigger physicality, um, just his physical presence, than what Jared Leto has in this film. Uh, and so um, I think that that would have made a bit of a difference here because it just, I don't know, it's just Jared Leto's lack of physicality. It's kind of odd. It's in some ways there is a there is a I would I wouldn't call it a perfectness, but there is there is something that is right about Jared Leto in this role. There are there are really there are moments where he it makes sense as to why he'd be in this role, but then there are other aspects of having him in this role that don't quite make sense either. As I said, he's pretty serviceable though. The, the bigger problem is really the character is underwritten. The visuals in this film are interesting. It's set in 1950s Japan, and mostly they do a pretty good job of giving you a feel and a sense of 1950s Japan. However, there are moments where it could go either way, and you think, is this really 1950s Japan? Particularly the opening sequence uh, in the prison, where that whole sequence of the film, because I went into this movie and all I knew was that Jared Leto was a soldier who was in a Japanese prison. He's an American soldier who has been charged with some sort of crime and is in, and now in a Japanese prison. However, the prison sequence does not feel like the 1950s. And so I thought, ah, oh, is this a recent war? Is he a veteran of the Iraq war? I was sort of trying to get my head around what war it was and what period it was, because it didn't really feel like it was set in the 1950s. However, once they get out of the jail, then you know that whole 1950s vibe really starts to come to the fore quite strongly. But there are still moments where, I mean, they've done a pretty admirable job, and I imagine it would, be, it would have been pretty hard to try and recreate that perfectly, but they have done a pretty okay job. And the sort of, the general visual aesthetic of this movie is uh, it's pretty good, and, and that's one of the things that you'd have to say is a high point about this film. However, like I said, this is style over substance ultimately, because what's missing here is the meat. The meat and potatoes of the storytelling is not present to go with the visual aesthetic, which is relatively impressive. And so you've got this uh, impressive visual setup, but the substance that should be there, the, the actual story, 
it just feels underwritten. Uh, it, it feels like it comes to a quick end. Um, there are some odd writing choices. Uh, there are setups in this film that don't really pay off and don't make any sense. Um, when, when you're writing a story like this, uh, the, the, everything that should uh, that goes on screen should be at the service of the plot. So it should either be advancing the story in some way, or it should be giving us important information about the characters who are part of the story. But there are scenes in this film that don't do either. One of the classic scenes is, and by the way, this is going to be some mild spoiler territory now. I won't, it's not hard spoilers, but they are mild spoilers. So if you haven't seen it and you don't want anything at all to be spoiled, then maybe turn it off and come back later. Um, but there is a scene in this film where Jared Leto, uh, his character, kills a former acquaintance of his. Now, the way the story is set up and the way this scene plays out Normally, this is the type of event in a story which would be the trigger for a sort of chain reaction of events that then cause some catastrophic uh, consequence or outcome in the story or for the life of our, our main character. But that doesn't happen. Not at all. There is absolutely no consequence at all. This killing doesn't trigger anything in the story. So there's no payoff at all. Now, the other way in which this type of scene could be used is to try and uh, portray some important information about the character. So it could be tempting to think that maybe they wrote this scene with him killing this former acquaintance of his so that we would sort of really strongly get the message that uh, Jared Leto's character has now well and truly left his former life behind him. He is now 120% committed to his new Yakuza family. They are his blood family now, and he will do anything uh, to protect them. However, you don't need this scene because we've already had a sequence of other events involving Jared Leto in the lead up to the scene over the previous hour or so where he well and truly proves to us through his actions and what he does in those scenes that he is now 120% committed to his new uh, Yakuza family. So there's actually no need for this killing at all to take place. It just It's redundant, it doesn't move the story forward, there's no payoff, and it doesn't tell us anything new that we don't already know about this character. The other thing is the ending of this film. It feels confused, it happens quite suddenly, it feels like it comes to a sudden end, and it's, it's confused because the way the ending is set up, the story is set up so that Jared Leto's character will effectively become an important protector. And, and he plays the role of the family protector. However, the ending of this film is also set up in such a way that there is a revenge motif, and the revenge motif, that, that motivation of getting vengeance, actually feels more powerful and like the real reason for the killing. And yet they've still tried to play this Jared Leto's character as the protector angle, and so it's confused, and it, it just... It doesn't, it's not clear really which one was really driving him. And as a result, the ending of the film just feels so strange. Now, if the protector role had been established in a much better way and the revenge had been sidelined, then I think this would have been a much stronger ending. But it's not. You've set this character up like it's supposed to be. Effectively, this film feels like it's it's missing an ending. I think it feels like the ending of this film really should have been about the pointlessness of violence and how you know vengeance doesn't lead anywhere good. But that's not how this film ends at all. But the character that Jared Leto plays, everything is sort of set up like this is going towards this you know high level Greek tragedy type ending. But that's not really what we get. We get sort of a part tragedy that just basically sort of peters out and and comes to a rather sudden and I think unimpressive ending. The other thing that was interesting about the uh, direction and, and some of the choices in this film was the, the, the use of graphic violence. Now there are these moments, these regular sort of intervals if you like, of, of graphic violence uh, uh, that appear in this film and a part of the story. Now I don't have an issue with violence in a film as long as that violence is at the service of some greater purpose. 
And uh, it's not just there for the sake of gratuity, but a lot of times the violence in this film, when it does appear, it just feels gratuitous. It, it, it doesn't feel... It's, it's almost like someone watched a Tarantino film and then thought to themselves, I would like to have that level of violence in my movie, but there's no reason for that level of violence really to be in this film, or certainly not so consistently and regularly. I mean, I, I, I can understand why it might be something that would appear in a, in a movie to at one or two points to show you something about the violence of these characters in the world that they inhabit. But after a while, when it just starts repeating itself, it's sort of, it's just kind of weird. To me, it just, it just felt like an odd choice. And the other thing that was an odd choice, I thought, was the use of helicopters in this film to try and convey the, uh, the sense of the presence of the military. Um, now, the reason I thought that was an odd choice is because for most of us, I think, we don't really associate the sound of a helicopter. You don't see the helicopter, by the way. You just hear these helicopters. And this movie is set in Japan, remember. And so you hear, once or twice, you hear the sound of uh, what are supposed to be, I presume, American military helicopters flying overhead. You never see them, but they are associated with Jared Leto's character. However, I don't think we really associate helicopters with that period of American military history as much. Now, they were present, but it's just not something in your mind you instinctively associate with that period. And interestingly, the first time we hear the helicopter is when Jared Leto was in jail, and that's when I thought, ah, oh, maybe this is some sort of PTSD flashback, and the war that the this film is talking about is actually, it was the Iraq war, or it was Afghanistan, or somewhere like that, because that's really your first instinct when you hear the helicopter noise. So I just thought it was an odd choice. I think there were probably better ways perhaps they could have conveyed the whole military background thing. And again, the choice of helicopters, it just was a little bit confused. I'm guessing it was there to try and indicate to us that he has a military background because it's not quite enough substance-wise to convey any sort of PTSD idea because maybe that's what they were going for, to try and show us, hey, the reason this character has so much violence in his life is because of the awful horrors of war that he's seen. But there's not really enough of that. If you were going to use a helicopter, I personally, I would expect there to also be the sound of gunfire and screaming dying soldiers. You know, that's a very sort of typical motif you hear. And, it, and you know from that motif that this soldier or this character has some pretty serious serious psychological uh, wounds and brokenness from the war that he's carrying inside him. But all you get is the helicopter noise, and it just, I thought it was a really odd choice uh, for not just for what it's trying to convey, perhaps, because it's a little bit confused, but also for the era in which this film is set. It's not really something you would associate with the American military so much in that sort of context. Effectively, I would say this film, to sum things up, I would say this is a film that feels like it is building towards this massive and impressive crescendo, but that crescendo never, ever arrives. The film just peters out. The first two thirds of this film, they feel, it feels like it's punching above its weight. It really does feel like it's been influenced by Scorsese and it's, and it's close to that level. But then the final third of the film, it just peters out and it undermines everything that's gone before. So basically you end up with a film that is building towards this massive crescendo and then the crescendo never arrives. There's no meat on the bones of the story where it should be there. You've got a classic case of, as I said, style over substance and unfortunately that just doesn't really make for a particularly rewarding or memorable film. The frustrating thing too about this and some of the other recent Netflix films is people have been sort of talking about this idea that they're almost like direct to DVD type movies, but really they're not. These, this, this film in particular is much better than a direct to DVD, to what you might typically call a direct to DVD film. And that's what makes it so frustrating is because all of the building blocks are in place for a really good and impressive film and it's got lots of things that are there to like about the movie but it just can't put everything together and that, that sort of final one or two uh, vital ingredients are just missing from the film and so as a result it just 
as I said, it peters out and it's not as impressive or, or substantial as it really could be. So there you go. That's The Outsider. I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've seen the film. So please let me know in the comment section below. What did you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree with my assessment? Uh, if you like the content I'm making, please support me on Patreon. There is a link in the description below and there will be a link on screen at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. See you next time on Left Foot Media.